Oh man, you don't know how happy I feel that we have the opportunity to talk about these two guys once again. I feel like I'm in high school. I feel like it's 2017. I'm suiting up for my pre-Cal 11 exam, that in which I was probably going to get 100% on because I was very good at that. Yeah, guess who peaked in high school. But I feel like I'm back in the band room of the East Wing of school and I'm recording a video during my C-Block spare while I'm supposed to be studying because there's some Canucks news talking about these two players. Man, just mega throwbacks with these guys. A lot of love, a lot of sentimentality for me personally, because talking about these guys, these were the players that were a part of the Vancouver Canucks organization when I was starting out my career as a YouTuber. And that sounds so cheesy to say that, my career as a YouTuber, but I don't know. This is my job now. This is my full-time job. And it's kind of all been sparked up because of conversations like these. So, today we are talking about two Canucks of yesteryear and talking about whether or not they could, should, or would return to the Vancouver Canucks. Okay, one of them is talking about the Canucks, the other is talking about the NHL as a whole. Today we are talking about the pride of Richmond himself, Troy Stetcher, baby, because the other day he had himself an interview on Donnie and Dolly. And as you could imagine, there are some pretty good things that the crew over there were able to talk about. We're also talking about former San Jose Sharks draftee and eventual Canucks player, Nikolai Goldolbin, because there have been some big rumors popping out saying that he is going to make his way back to the National Hockey League. So, where do we begin? Do we start off with the Russian coming back to the NHL or Troy from Richmond's potential return to Vancouver? Who really knows? Okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and bury the lead and talk about Nikolai Goldobin first. So, everybody kind of knows the story about this guy, or at least if you're a Canucks fan who has been following the team as long as I have, you're probably very familiar with everything Nikolai Goldobin had gone through. He's a 27-year-old forward playing for Metallurg Magnitogorsk in the KHL, where, this previous season, he had 36 points in 59 games played. Goldie was initially a San Jose Sharks draftee in the first round of the 2014 NHL entry draft, but after spending some time up and down with the Barracuda and the regular Sharks, he had gotten sent over to Vancouver in the Yannick Hansen trade. Yeah, that's right, Honey Badger, the guy that's doing those radio hits on Sportsnet, he was a Canuck and he was a very good one at that. Maybe not the best, but he was like a 20-goal scorer playing with the Sedins, which was actually really nuts to acknowledge, to be honest, but... Hansen was traded from Vancouver over to San Jose. The Canucks got a young prospect in Goldolbin in exchange. Back in this time frame, Goldolbin was 21 years old. So a lot of Canucks fans were saying, hey, this guy was a really good AHL point producer. He was skilled. He was slick. He had a lot of offensive potential when it came to his playmaking, his shooting. He had some really good offensive skill. But as his career went on with the Vancouver Canucks, he never really broke out. Now, sure, there was a 27-point year in 63 games in 2018-19. That was the pinnacle of Goldolbin's point production in the National Hockey League, but he was never really able to find himself a full-time spot as a legit top six forward like his potential suggested he might be able to achieve. This was because of work ethic issues. This was because of back-checking issues. This is because Travis Green did not have himself the best sort of relationship with deploying Nikolai Goldolbin. And from the way that he played, sure, you could acknowledge he had some offensive skill, but he definitely wasn't the most all-around player, and that's sort of where the faults lied. Eventually, he made his way back over to Utica for 2019-20, was a point per game over there, and then he went to the KHL. He had never looked back since then, and this season, while he was there, he didn't really produce all too much in comparison to other players on his team. I mean, go over to the numbers for Magnitogorsk, and you'll see that he was actually outscored by Brendan Leipzig, of all people. Yeah, that guy's over there. And Philippe Maillet, who was also there too. But if you go over to the update that we have had, this is a tweet made by, who is this tweeter? Hockey News Hub? RFA Nikolai Goldolbin has decided to continue his career in the NHL. This is what his agent, Sergei Isakov, ended up saying. Nikolai decided to continue his career in the NHL, and you just have to respect this. He played in Magnitogorsk for several years, and a desire to leave ended up appearing. There are clubs that are interested in him in the NHL. He's a guy with a head and character, so I think he'll succeed, Isakov said. Now, ignoring the very obvious aspect of, okay, this is an agent trying to pump the tires of his client, you know, he kind of wants to get the bag too, doesn't he? 
Nikolai Goldobin in the NHL is an experiment that I don't really know if it's actually going to work. Now, for the most part, when you see the average KHL guy head over to the NHL, they are nothing too spectacular. The Artemi Panarins, the Kuzmenkos, the Kaprizovs, these guys are never really too common. And instead, you get a lot of other players that are just okay, that are sometimes not really given opportunities to actually play, like Shepachev a few years ago with the Golden Knights. That scenario comes to my mind right away. But this is going to be an interesting one because Goldobin was a pretty decent to meh NHL player in the past. And it's interesting because in the KHL, it's not like he was any better. At least with the Kuzmenkos and the Gusevs and the Kaprizovs, these guys were all top of the line KHL players before coming over to the NHL. So ultimately, time is going to tell whether or not Goldie has that NHL success that he wasn't able to accomplish in his first stint, but the NHL is looking to be his next home. Whether that's with Vancouver or with any other team, who really knows, but uh, yeah, we'll see where he goes, we'll see how he plays, and we'll keep up to date with his situation. As for the other player we're talking about, we are talking about the pride from Richmond, Tony Stretcher, because when it comes to Stretcher, he had himself an appearance on Donnie and Dolly, and he had some pretty interesting things to say. Now, for Stretcher, we all remember what he was. He was a North Dakota player, playing with Brock Besser in the 15-16 season, who had signed with the Vancouver Canucks as a free agent. He was not really the top guy, not really an AHL guy either. He was more so of a bottom pair depth defenseman that just had some really good two-way qualities and work ethic. He was 5'10", 185, so definitely not the biggest guy out there, but Stetcher still had a really attractive profile based off of his body of work with the North Dakota Fighting Sioux. The fact that he was a teammate of Besser's and he was from here and he liked the Canucks growing up also made it icing on the cake, but Troy Stetcher maxed out as a 24-point defenseman in 71 games played in his first NHL year. He was not able to accomplish more points than that, unfortunately, but eventually he did end off his Canucks career with a pretty good showcase in the postseason, getting three points in 17 games. Now, Lego, you might be saying, you're crazy, man. Why are you saying that's a good number? Well, the thing is, Troy Stetcher had some super clutch goals in that postseason run, which is kind of what I remember him for. The goal against Jordan Bennington against St. Louis, that one comes to mind right away. So even though he didn't produce all too much, he was still a anchor on the blue line, super hardworking, really involved in the board battles, and you could definitely tell there was a heart and soul aspect to Stetcher and his game, and that carried over into other parts of his career too. He played with the Wings, he played with the Kings, he played with the Coyotes, and eventually the Flames, so he's been sort of a nomad the past few years. He went from Vancouver to Detroit to LA to Arizona to Calgary, all in the span of about three seasons worth of play, and that's definitely a journey. Especially more so when you acknowledge that he is expiring at the end of this season, which is why he was brought on to Donnie and Dolly in the first place to talk about a potential Canucks reunion. We've got the quote over here from a Canucks Army article written by my buddy Quads. There are some comments from Stetcher talking about Daryl Sutter and the controversy and the fact that he was fired and the experience that Stetcher had with Sutter, but this is sort of where the topic is introduced. I don't think it's a surprise that I'm not an offensive defenseman. Natural, stay-at-home defenseman, I'm not going to be a superstar. I feel like I'm a good supporting piece and a depth player. I'm a player that works hard and keeps my mouth shut, and Daryl Sutter is a coach that really respects that and expects the best out of you. If you're going to pout and you're going to complain, which I don't think I do as an individual, then you're going to obviously hear from him. So he's someone that I respect with the fact that if you work hard, he's going to give you an opportunity, and that's exactly what he gave me in Calgary. He gave me a great opportunity to play an important role for our team on the third pair and play a lot of meaningful minutes, so I really enjoyed my time with him. This is where things get crazy. Quads writes in this article, The Canucks called Stetcher's agent last summer trying to bring the defenseman back for a reunion. Given this is the same management regime that made that call, it wouldn't be much of a surprise for the Canucks to come calling again. Stetcher didn't show his cards too much when asked about a potential reunion with his hometown Canucks, though. I don't know. We'll see. Obviously, that's something I leave to my agent. Him and I will obviously have our discussions in the offseason, which we've already begun. Just kind of doing a recap of my year and moving forward, we'll do some more research on teams and what they need as personnel and opportunity, where they are as an organization going forward, if they're a winning culture or if they're in a rebuilding phase, and whatever we see is the best fit is the decision we'll make. So, Stetcher definitely is not putting it out there that he's going to return to Vancouver, but he is saying that there are possibilities that depend on what the teams are trying to do. So at the end of the day, who really knows? 
If Troy Stetcher came back to Vancouver, though, I think it would be a pretty welcomed reunion. He's a good defensive defenseman on the back end, right-handed. The Canucks need more of those. He's better than all the other guys that were suiting up. I think the Canucks had, like, a rotation of, what was that, like, 10 defensemen on the blue line? Bear, Juleson, Willannon, and... Everybody else from Abbotsford, the new guys, the NCAA guys, it's going to be kind of a gong show if the Canucks try to roll with any sort of similar format. But Stetcher would round that out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, not just about Stetcher, but also about Gil Dolben returning to the NHL. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishar Shrosnay 9. And bye.